bandwidth. So as always, uh, I start with my updates about what is going on vis-a-vis -vis, uh, tourism scenario is concerned around the globe and how things are moving. Uh, at present, uh, I could lay hands on something which uh, was posted a few days back by UNWTO, which was talking about uh, they were taking care of 217 destinations worldwide and they were analyzing the information uh, from these 217 destinations around the globe. And uh, at this moment, 3% of all global destinations have now taken steps to ease travel restrictions. So that's something hard to uh, look at and that, uh, that, that is something which could uh, start the revival aspect that we are working on. Seven destinations have eased travel restrictions for international tourism purposes. So there are seven destinations around the globe which have started this thing and several of them are in discussions for significant, uh, in advanced stage of discussions about reopening of their borders. Uh, well, 100% of all destinations still continue to have some sort of risk travel restrictions. Some sort of travel restrictions are there. 75% of them continue to have complete closure of their international borders. So some of them might be letting in people because of medical reasons or for other things. So uh, for in 37% of uh, the cases or in destinations around the globe, uh, restrictions have been for more than 10 weeks and around 24% these restrictions have been for more than 14 weeks. So that's a considerable time period and that's, that's what is hitting hard uh, our economy and, uh, and things are moving in a very different trajectory, not the way we were planning that. Uh, somebody has somebody. muted his. Kindly keep your audios in a muted manner, please. So, uh, uh, obviously, global guidelines to reopen tourism, a response team is being worked up in a very important way. And uh, here's a breakup which I could lay hands on, which was talking about that 65 of the destinations which are closed out of that. Uh, in Africa, 74% of the destinations are closed. In Americas, around 86% of these destinations are closed. Asia and, Asia and the Pacific, 67%. Europe, 74 And Middle East, 69%. So what, what we actually are trying to infer out of it is that more than 75 or 70% of the destinations around the globe are closed. And there's no, no... No business is being transacted over there. But there's a there's another flip side to this. Uh, I, I came across a very interesting sort of an uh, example, or you can say I, I had an interesting discussion the other day, which I want to share with my students over here and the participants and Dr. Mustafa. We would look at your comments for this particular thing. You know, uh, the city where I come from, uh, this city gets around about 10 million tourists in a year. And uh, the other day, one of the TV channels was here to, uh, cover me up and they were talking about the fact that all the hotels in Jammu city at this moment are completely full and I was surprised and I was literally surprised at what's going on how could this be how is this possible and uh, if my students who have been staying with us from day one that's way back in March if you could recall what I used to talk about I used to talk about one very important aspect and that was quarantine hotels hotels which are going to be considered to be as a quarantined hotel. Quarantine. Another thing, another very important aspect that which I used to talk uh, way back in March, where I used to tell you that the closest to the healthcare professionals or the frontline professionals are the hospitality professionals. We are courteous. We have all those yes, trades, except the medical uh, understanding or medical knowledge that uh, barring that rest, all the trades are possessed by this. And you know what's going on? Uh, every flight that is landing in Jammu, every uh, train that is landing in Jammu, they, they, the people have to go to go for a compulsory administrative or institutional quarantine. And they are tested after three, four days and all those processes are done. And once they, are, uh, they come out to be negative, they are sent back home. Or if they are come out positive, they are sent for medical quarantine. So where are these all these people being put up? Uh, obviously, government has its own places where they are putting up, but a lot of people don't want to go to those places and they can afford. So government has designated a lot of hotels as quarantine hotels and you can go to these hotels and stay there. So that's a different sort of a perspective, but hotels are at least making money and even the buses are going to our neighboring uh, town that is Katra, which is the base town for Mata Vaishnav Devi. The people are being uh, taken to hotels in those particular places also. So that's, that's an entirely a different sort of a scenario uh, that is coming up. 
uh, as we have been talking about, we have been discussing this particular factor that protocols keep changing, normals keep developing day by day and things keep moving day by day. So after every fortnight, after every 10 days, 14 days, 15 days, things do change and things do evolve. I don't know whether this has happened for the better or for the, good, uh, for the worse, but the, this is the way things are moving on. What are the SDGs? Obviously, in 2015, uh, September 2015, UNWTO came together, people, uh, member states did come together, and they came out with 17 goals, which was an agenda for 2030, agenda for sustainable development. And these 17 goals had around about 169 targets. And these are actually our guide towards building up uh, the various member states, the private sector, the civil society, and to help tourism and hospitality to uh, grow up in a sustainable manner. Uh, we all around uh, about till 2019 were rehearsing a very important factor and that was uh, a very important aspect was being researched and this aspect was referred to as over tourism. But now suddenly all this thing has vanished away and uh, now we are obviously where uh, I just gave you figures where we were talking about the 75% of the destinations are closed and 75% of these destinations are uh, not even not even moving and not even things are being done. So. Uh, Sustainability, sustainable development will have a new definition in times to come, will have a new uh, vision in times to come. But the fact is that uh, these sustainable development goals will be a very important aspect which will be measuring, uh, me measuring these particular things. Uh, these are the 17 uh, sustainable development goals that we have. Obviously, Dr. Mustafa is going to uh, work on and is going to tr uh, try to talk about uh, 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 is going to talk about all these things, but uh, I just thought that I'll at least get you acquainted with what these 17 goals are. A couple of these SDG goals, which I found were very crucial and very important vis-a-vis -vis tourism is concerned, hospitality is concerned, which directly linked towards it. Uh, I'm going to discuss about those three or four goals and uh, Dr. Mustafa is going to give you the during and post-COVID scenario, how these things are uh, moving up and building it up. Uh, goals 8, 12 and 14 uh, are very important and these are uh, Little bit in a, in a little way uh, directly hinging towards hospitality and tourism industry that we uh, that we are very importantly part of. Um, number one SDG number one which talks about poverty. Okay, and it, it it in a way looks at tourism as one of those factors which is very well positioned to foster economic growth and development. We have discussed this uh, on earlier at uh, on earlier times also where we used to talk about the fact that for every ten thousand US dollars invested in within this particular industry, we had a lot more people uh, being employed than even in the manufacturing industry. That is around seventy to seventy five people, and manufacturing. Uh, employs around 50 to 54 people or 55 people. So this is going to be as uh, uh, these goals. Uh, SDG one prim uh, prominently talks about the fact that uh, how national uh, reduction or poverty reduction goals could be phased out or built out built around the tourism and hospitality scenario. The quality education, which one, most of the stakeholders uh, attending today's lecture are concerned with tries to talk about inclusiveness. Inclusiveness is one of those factors which we have been always discussing within our lectures also where we have been talking about the fact that inclusivity is paramount, universalism is paramount, where we talk, try to take, uh, take along with us all the different uh, sects and uh, all the different uh, segments of people, for example, and especially the vulnerable sections, for example, uh, we, can, uh, we can talk about disabled, uh, disabled people or marginalized communities or women and all women folk. So we, we try to see to it that quality education in an inclusive manner should be spread and universalism should be looked at. Uh, one of the SDGs, uh, SDG 8 talks about the de uh, decent, uh, decent working conditions and we talk about that, uh, we, we, we are trying to build up uh, one of those industries which is uh, one of the top four export earners globally and is currently providing one in 10 jobs wide, uh, worldwide. So that's, that's, that's the essence of our industry. SDG 9 primarily refers towards industry innovation and infrastructure. So tourism, a byproduct of our tourism is a very important aspect that whenever infrastructure is built up, be it healthcare, be, be it uh, public sector in, uh, infrastructure vis-a-vis -vis roads and modes of communication are concerned or modes of travel are concerned, they are also for the consumption of the people living within that particular region. So within the, the host society or with the whole ecosystem within that, within which that destination is built up, they are also using these particular, this particular infrastructure. And this infrastructure actually brings up or develops, especially the healthcare aspect, uh, develops the kids within that particular 
re region. So we have uh, SDG 11, which talks about sustainable cities. We have responsible SDG 12, talking about responsible consumption and uh, production. SDG 14, again, I said, is very important because it talks about life below water. That's marine life. And, uh, you know, uh, we around, around the globe, a lot of stress is being laid on the fact that we have to take care of our marine life. We have to see to it that uh, the, the blue economy that we refer to, a lot of, lot of countries depend upon like Jap Japan and all these countries depend upon blue economy and they are based upon uh, on whatever is being produced by our seas and I our oceans. So this blue, blue economy needs to be taken care of. And this is also one of those factors which is very keenly looked at and w worked up. Uh, sorry, I had to. I was I was rushing out today because we are already behind schedule. So these are some of the references that I followed, and this is something that I had to talk about uh, vis a vis uh, sustainability and uh, uh, sustainable development goals and tourism is concerned. Over to you, Dr. Mustafa. I made I made you the host, Dr. Mustafa, so you can share your screen also. Thank you very much. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor uh, Parikshat Minhas and uh, my good friend, uh, uh, Dr. Kandapan, uh, for inviting me for this session. Uh, hopefully, the, your audience benefit from this session and I uh, can at least give some tips about uh, tourism and uh, sustainable development goals. And uh, we have a good discussion about this uh, very important topic. Uh, you you uh, have my screen, right? We, yes, we can see your screen. You can put it in, uh, I think, presentation mode. Yes, okay. Okay. Yeah, perfect. The topic of today is uh, tourism and SDG uh, post-COVID-19 perspective. But uh, before go to post-COVID-19 uh, perspective, uh, uh, I would like to discuss a, a bit about uh, pre-COVID-19 situation and see uh, wh what's the difference between pre- and post-COVID-19 uh, uh, situation and uh, what will be significant and meaningful uh, discussion and debate uh, after this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, as uh, our friend uh, introduced me, I'm uh, Dr. Mustafa uh, from uh, School of Hospitality, Tourism and Events, uh, Taylor's University. And uh, actually I'm uh, passionate and uh, interested that to work on some topic uh, related to sustainable development goals and sustainability. So uh, because of that, one of my main focus of research uh, uh, is the sustainable tourism and the connection to sustainable development goals. Actually, at the moment, I'm editing two special issues for Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Technology. Uh, and this special issue is about technology in tourism and sustainable development goals. We finalized and wrapped up the, this uh, special issue and uh, this special issue will be published soon. We have some good paper related to uh, technology in tourism and hospitality connection to, connected to sustainable uh, development goals and SDGs. And also I'm editing now another special issue for a tourism management perspective journal and uh, in this special issue, we focus on uh, deepening our understanding about SDG and connection of SDG and tourism. When we say uh, uh, tourism and SDG, what we, tourism and hospitality and SDG, actually what we mean. So uh, uh, we hope this uh, special issue uh, can contribute a bit to highlight uh, this connection between tourism and SDG. Okay, but uh, what is SDG? Uh, Prof. Uh, Professor has uh, explained about uh, different SDG. Uh, yeah, SDG is uh, uh, Sustainable Development Goals, 17 Sustainable Development Goals that was approved by uh, UN in 2015. And uh, uh, 
And now is the benchmark for achieving sustainability in different disciplines, different area. But actually, the uh, SDG is not new things. SDG is the continuing of the sustainability concept. Sustainability concept started in 1972 in the UN Conference on Human Environment in Stockholm. So this, uh, uh, actually the concept of sustainability was uh, uh, approved and uh, uh, actually was highlighted in both the conservation strat uh, strategy in this document, Living Resource Conservation for Sustainable Development in 1980. So the concept uh, trace back to 1970 and 80. But the, what's the difference, what's the evolution of this concept to uh, SDG. Uh, the first definition of sustainability actually focus on, uh, uh, as we can see in this document, focus on uh, intergenerational concept. So means they keeping the resources for future generation. So uh, if we see in this uh, document, important document in 1980, human being in their quest for economic development need to or must come to term with the reality of uh, resources limitation and carrying capacity of ecosystem. So this is the concept that uh, sustainability built based on. And then uh, this concept uh, in uh, actually in a uh, very important conference in Brundtland conference that this conference based on the name of the chairwoman of this conference come out with a uh, fundamental definition. Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of future, future uh, generation, meets the needs of present without compromising the ability of future generation. So this is the uh, main topic that the uh, main definition of the sustainability that started in 1970 and 80. But, and this continue for uh, decades. Actually, 1992 agenda for, uh, uh, 20, uh, for uh, 21 century, Agenda 21, and then local Agenda 21, focus on this definition of uh, sustainability. And then uh, after 2000, for first time in UN World Summit on Sustainable Development, this definition started to change to a more holistic approach. This definition, uh, traditional definition, focus on intergenerational uh, concept. So keep uh, the resources for future generation. But the new concept after 2004, the definition of sustainability actually focus on holistic approach of sustainability and uh, uh, focus on integration of three components of sustainable development, economic development, social development, and environmental protection. Based on this normative definition and concept, sustainability is meaningful when we can make balance between economic development and at the same time protect environment and think about social development and social inclusion. So this definition of uh, sustainable uh, development actually uh, is uh, completely different with the first concept. Still, first concept is part of this definition, but as a secondary emphasize. So, uh, uh, after uh, 2000 uh, and after this conference, this concept uh, uh, started to evolve and uh, expanded. And in uh, 20 years after uh, uh, Rio de Janeiro conference in uh, 2012, uh, the concept, the new concept, actually the, the more uh, holistic and the integrated concept of sustainability and with this topic, the future we want uh, was born. In this concept, in this definition, that this definition is uh, fundamental and the basic of uh, uh, sustainable development goals. In this definition, uh, and this document focus on promoting sustained, inclusive and equitable economic growth, uh, creating greater opportunity for all. So we talk about uh, development for all and reducing inequalities. 
uh, promoting integrated and sustainable management of natural resources and ecosystem. So this focus on uh, and refer to environmental protection. So uh, this definition based on three pillars of sustainability started to uh, evolve and expand. And uh, then uh, another pillar was uh, actually the, included in this uh, three pillar and uh, this definition of sustainability. These uh, three pillars and make balance between these three cannot happen without a good governance and governance system for uh, government and for uh, businesses. So uh, these uh, four pillars actually define new definition of sustainability and uh, uh, the route for UN Sustainable Development Goals. So after this, in 2015, Sustainable Development Goals was born and approved and uh, uh, was uh, actually a direction for future development by uh, 2030. And all countries and all disciplines uh, should be aligned and uh, uh, try to make policy and development plans uh, for achieving this uh, sustainable development goal and actually to achieving uh, four pillars of sustainability, uh, economic growth, uh, environmental protection, social inclusion, and uh, governance. This figure uh, can show the, in a better way the, this, uh, uh, the connection between these four pillars of sustainability and sustainable development goals. And uh, you can see here in one layer, some of the uh, goals actually uh, more refer to environmental protection, uh, one layer, uh, and some of the goals uh, refer more and uh, emphasize more on uh, society and uh, social inclusion and social development. Some goals focus more on economic development and this uh, goal 17 and in somehow goal 16 focus more on governance. But actually all these goals are interrelated and can happen if we see all these SDG and uh, holistic and integrated framework. If we don't see this SDG as a holistic and integrated framework, it's not possible to achieve it, right? So this is starting point for tourism. What happened in tourism? Okay, the concept of uh, sustainable tourism uh, actually the, was started uh, similar to concept of sustainable uh, development and in the, back to uh, 1970 and 80, and then in 1990, right? Sustainable to, uh, tourism referred to uh, sustaining tourism concept and sustaining tourism industry and uh, refer to positive and negative impact. We try to maximize positive impact and minimize uh, negative impact, right? But uh, actually after uh, SDG and uh, before SDG, uh, there, are, there were some debate that uh, actually what we want when we say sustainable tourism, we want to sustain tourism industry in the cost of anything, or we want tourism for sustainable development. And we want tourism to contribute to process of sustainable uh, development in different destinations. So because of that, 2017 was named uh, by UNWTO as an International Year of Sustainable Tourism for Development. So tourism is a tool for sustainable development. So we need to look at how tourism can contribute to sustainability, right? not only try to sustain tourism. This is a, a big debate be between scholars. Uh, if we can see uh, from this uh, article, this is uh, one example of a very hot uh, topic for a few years, for a couple of years. Uh, based on the classic definition of tourism, a, a classic definition of sustainability, Tourism, which is in a form which can maintain its viability 
in an area for indefinite period of time. So based on the classic definition, okay, if we can maintain tourism for a long period of time means we have sustainable tourism. This is the mindset uh, among many uh, tourism, uh, especially practitioner, hospitality practitioner, and also some academics. But uh, Butler uh, and uh, many other scholars criticize this definition. And actually they come out with the, uh, this, uh, another definition that uh, tourism should be developed in a manner uh, that uh, it's remain while uh, an indefinite period of time, but also doesn't degrade or alter the environment, human environment and physical environment in which is based. So this definition doesn't refer to sustainable or sustaining, refer to sustainable development and make balance between economic, social, and environmental uh, protection and development, right? Okay, uh, you know, uh, sustainable, uh, you know, tourism and travel is uh, a big uh, industry in the world and uh, one of the largest uh, economic sector, 10% uh, uh, contribution to world GDP, around the seven trillion uh, US dollar contribution. One of the uh, uh, 11 jobs around the world is come from tourism and about uh, uh, 284 million jobs come from tourism. This is before uh, pand the pandemic, right? Now is uh, uh, different. The situation is totally different. Okay. Um, in 2015, 1.2 billion international arrival uh, uh, come from tourism, and uh, 2019, this uh, reached to 1.5. And uh, here is important. This is from uh, uh, World Travel and Tourism Council report in 2017. Despite ongoing challenges such as terrorist attack, natural disaster, uh, extreme weather events, health pandemics, this report is 2017. And political instability, still tourism expanding and have a growth of 4% a year. So it means tourism during this year, even uh, through these different uh, uh, crises, survive and still continue to uh, grow before pandemic. Right? Okay. So, now we uh, have an uh, industry with 4% growth per year. And uh, before pandemic, was expected to reach to 1.8 billion international uh, uh, travel and tourists in 2013. Okay, based on this report, this industry with this uh, uh, rapid growth should consider cost of destination and people, culture, environmental, environment, and support them. Based on this report, tourism can bring peace, can bring all people together, sharing experience, uh, uh, can contribute to habitats and biodiversity, can create livelihood for people, in remote areas, and they can safeguard cultural heritage, right? So this is something that uh, tourism can contribute to different SDGs, right? It means tourism is not only contributing in three uh, SDGs that mentioned in targets of uh, 169 uh, targets of uh, SDG, only in uh, three SDGs, uh, mention about uh, tourism, goal 8, 12, and 14. But actually, tourism can contribute in all SDGs and all aspects of sustainability, but positively and negatively, right? So this is some opportunity based on SDGs that we have. We can uh, promote and sustain inclusive uh, economic growth, 
we can strengthen the means of implementation and uh, revitalize the global partnership between different stakeholders, build resilient in the infrastructure, and conserve uh, oceans and seas. This is uh, some opportunity that can happen and can positively contribute to different SDGs and also can negatively contribute to some SDGs. For example, SDG one, we have problem of before pandemic, we had problem of waste production, especially in cities. About, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about uh, 75 to 80% of uh, uh, tourists are urban tourists in city uh, destinations, urban destinations. And we had this big problem for uh, waste production, water and air pollution, traffic congestion, uh, land consumption for building accommodation, and also for uh, SDG 12 for carbon footprint, especially produced by travel and uh, aviation and flights, and also uh, uh, some problem with the life below water, natural resources management remains a challenge, challenge, particularly in human activities and effect on marine environment, right? This is a report by um, UNWTO uh, from uh, four, uh, 41 countries that uh, contributed in this report. And uh, based on uh, the report from these 41 countries, some of these countries this report is 2017, and one of the main reports about uh, journey to uh, 2030 and uh, tourism and the SDGs. In this report, some country uh, actually figure out that uh, tourism is an opportunity for their country. Some of them uh, actually identify tourism as a challenge and uh, as a treat. You can see some country for some SDGs. So before this pandemic, from uh, different sites, from uh, practitioner, from government, and from some scholars, we had uh, this problem uh, that uh, tourism can contribute positively and also negatively, right? The, this is uh, from uh, same report. And here you can see uh, for different SDG, the UNWTO actually the, uh, explain and identify uh, positive and negative uh, contribution of tourism based on different SDGs uh, from a perspective of government and the countries and destination and also from uh, uh, companies and uh, firms. So I'm not going to uh, go through these uh, different uh, SDGs. So uh, there are positive and negative impact, okay? But based on this negative and positive impact before pandemic, there was a very hot debate that uh, some of the scholars, especially uh, academic and some practitioners, believe that tourism addicted to growth which is incompatible with sustainability goals. So they believe that, okay, tourism can have positive and negative contribution in different SDGs, but actually the main and priority for tourism for different destinations and um, most of stakeholder in this uh, industry is uh, the most priority is growth of tourism without uh, considering ecological and uh, social impact. So they concluded this was a hot topic. If you uh, refer to some debate on uh, 2018 and 2019, so you can see tourism must be understood and managed with the wider context of sustainability sustainability should be secure. So tourism should be and should contribute to sustainability, right? But what happened after this debate? This is uh, 
something happened in 2019, all right? Not 2018 and 2019, before pandemic. For a few years, we had problem for, uh, we had problem of over tourism, right? So over tourism was a very hot topic. Many different destinations face, especially urban tourism, face with this problem. You can see, go home. So the local residents were against of tourism development. Why? Because they feel negative impact of tourism is uh, more than positive impact for them. So they feel tourism cannot contribute positively in their destination, their community. So, despite of all this debate, our tourism was one of the main problem that uh, uh, attract many discussion uh, in uh, a couple of uh, this uh, recent years. This is another figure for tourism. So you can see contribution of tourism in uh, contribution of tourism in CO2 emission. This is for 2005. And uh, you can see contribution of different segments uh, in tourism on CO2 uh, emission. The main uh, part is transport. And air transport is one of the uh, uh, critical part for uh, 18 uh, CO2 emission for uh, contribution to CO2 emission. Here you can see uh, another figure. This is from report uh, 2019, UNWTO, a transport related uh, impact. Uh, transport from tourism uh, in 2005 has about 3.7% uh, contribution to CO2 emission. For uh, compared to uh, CO2 emission from all uh, uh, transport related uh, emissions. So this increase to uh, 2016 and uh, was expected to increase in 2013 5.3%. Uh, so you can see the uh, 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 transport related uh, activities in tourism as a big uh, actually impact environmental impact right here is another figure for uh, to compare domestic and international arrival 2016 and 2000 uh, prediction for 2013 so you can see the share of domestic and uh, international arrival Right? You can see, for example, in Middle East is 82% uh, and 19, right? And uh, in uh, Asia and Pacific, 94 and 6%. And in Africa, 2016, 73 and uh, 27. But what's the contri uh, contribution uh, and uh, CO2 emission from international? is for Middle East is 75% uh, from international travel. But here is 19%. So you can see the number, you can compare the number and contribution to CO2 emission. So is uh, for international, of course, uh, the, the distance is much higher in international travel. So the contribution is much higher, right? So this is the figure that we had in 2019, before pandemic, right? But now what happened? After pandemic, now we are in a place, this is the, the latest report by uh, UNWTO in 26 or 27 of May, right? It's expected to, uh, 100 million people to 120 million people and jobs at risk. 910 billion to 1.3 trillion loss in export and uh, for 2020. 
and uh, 850 to 1.1 billion less international travel. So you can see three different scenarios here. And the best, bet, be, between the best and worst scenario, 60% to 80% of uh, international tourists uh, will be lost, decreased for 2020. But this will increase in 2021 and uh, it's predicted the, to go back to 2020 and 2000, uh, 2022 and 2023. But, and uh, this is uh, uh, the destination that uh, uh, 270 destination uh, actually use some uh, uh, restriction for uh, travel. Okay, so here you can see this picture. Uh, in, uh, of course, you see this, this. You saw this picture in social media after and uh, before pandemic. You can see. It is before and after pandemic, before and after pandemic. So now we don't have crowd. No, we don't have tourism. Actually, we don't have tourism. Many of borders were closed. Destinations were closed to domestic and international tourists. Most of majority of hotels shut down. So we can say tourism almost shut down, right? Okay. So now all uh, parties and people talking and thinking about recovery. Okay, back to normal. We'll be back to normal. But how? Actually, we want to be back to this normal? This is a big question. We want to be back to this normal and continue continue growth to 2030 to reach to this number of tourists, right? Or we want to transform to new normal. This is some significant discussion about the tourism and SDG after pandemic, post pandemic. What will be new normal? If we don't want to be back to before pandemic situation with many difficulties and challenges and the uh, problem that we face for achievement, for achieving sustainability related to SDG. Actually pandemic virus stop many things in the world. So yeah, in the cost of, uh, in the huge cost for different businesses and different industries, especially tourism. But it's happened, right? We can get this, uh, we can look at positive side of this one. Tourist uh, virus stop this actually crazy growth, this addiction to growth. So now is a good opportunity to think, okay, if we want to reopen, if we want to restart, how we can restart, right? How we can uh, actually de define and implement recovery plan, considering SDG, minimizing the negative impact, minimizing negative contribution of tourism to SDG, and maximize positive contribution. How this recovery plan should look like? How we can identify, how we can define, how we can implement recovery plan aligned with SDG. So this is a big question. So what should we do? Here, there are some advices from, not from me. You can see these advices are from UNWTO report in 2017, right? And some literature but we fail to implement because of the uh, speed of growth. And uh, actually we could not, and we were not willing to stop 
to stop this growth, right? But now this happened. We can go back to these uh, effective advices and see how we can implement it in recovery plan. How we can uh, actually convert this one to a new norm for recovery, new norm when reopen this uh, industry. All countries uh, already start, uh, some countries already started from 1st of June to uh, reopen uh, their borders and uh, some countries will start on uh, uh, June, July, August based on the condition of countries, right? So we need to look back to uh, some uh, uh, actually finding and uh, uh, some advices and see how we can uh, uh, develop and uh, plan uh, consistent and align with the SDG and uh, uh, develop and uh, uh, prepare recovery plan based on this. One of the main is the public policy is coherent dialogue among all stakeholders. So this is a very key point for recovery plan, for new norm. We need an effective collaboration between all stakeholders, between local, national government, private sector, host community. No one should uh, uh, leave behind. Right? So this is the uh, main priority and slogan of SDG. No one left behind. Right? So effective collaboration between different parties, different stakeholders. This is the key. And given the integrated nature of SDG, we need, we need, a, uh, we need an integrated planning system with contribution and uh, collaboration among all parties, sec uh, all sectorial and spatial level to optimize progress toward uh, SDGs, right? So this is one key for post-pandemic and for recovery plan. How our destination can be recovered considering sustainability? We need planning and policy development and integrated planning considering SDG. Why over tourism happened before? Actually, over tourism happened because we didn't have uh, an integrated plan for our destination. So just we thought about uh, uh, growing and economic growth without uh, considering, without actually assessing, evaluating impact of uh, this tourism growth. So over tourism happened. And uh, we have this experience, we have lessons from before, before pandemic. So we need integrated planning to achieve destination sustainability. So recovery plan should be based on and consistent and aligned with SDG to maximize positive and minimize negative impact. We need impact assessment. If we plan, if we prepare recovery plan, we need some sort of assessment, impact assessment to see what will be impact of our plan, right? So we need impact assessment and we need the implementation and monitoring uh, system. Uh, I think I should speed up. Uh, for, um, uh, this is a, a framework from 2012, but we failed to implement this framework because of growth. Now growth stopped, right? So we need an integration between different parties considering all aspects of development. So if we prepare a recovery plan, considering all these aspects, okay, our uh, businesses should be recovered, right? And should reopen and start to work. But how? If we can, our destination also, 
if we considering this integration and all these aspects, okay, we can come out with plan and uh, addition to going back to uh, economic development and economic growth, considering also uh, environmental impact and also the social impact and social inclusion. So, uh, planning is very important and policy. In uh, planning, uh, we need to uh, consider uh, lessons from uh, uh, before pandemic for uh, SDG. We need to look at carrying capacity of destination. Waste management are very important for uh, destination plan. Uh, transport management, management and low carbon transport, renewable energy and clean energy to reduce uh, CO2, CO2 emission and uh, water and resource consumption management. Okay, if we consider these different aspects in our recovery plan, so we can make sure that the, this plan, in this plan, we minimize impact. If we look at if we consider carrying capacity of this nation, so our tourism won't happen again, okay? And also for private sector. Uh, we need the SDG indicators and uh, for implementation we have, uh, we need capacity building of different stakeholders. Uh, of course, we need the finance and monitoring system for uh, private sector. Okay. Now, uh, the, uh, many governments talking about financing private sector and uh, some incentive for uh, private sector and private company to recover. What we can do? We can, in this state, to uh, help uh, companies, to help uh, private sector and the enterprises, uh, the government can... Uh, uh, help uh, uh, companies for recovery plan based on their business model and if and ask them to develop business, business models to foster inclusive green growth. So if, uh, uh, of course, this uh, need to happen, but uh, the businesses and the companies, if want to, um, especially in uh, hospitality and tourism, we have large uh, different types of company accommodation transport company tour operators uh, attractions uh, destination management company uh, if the uh, government want to uh, help and finance these companies need to consider and need to monitor their contribution to sdg how their business plan can contribute to sdg What's the new business plan to minimize the impact and maximize the uh, positive, minimize the negative impact and maximize the uh, positive impact? Also, we need to refine, we need to redefine and identify contribution of tourism, positive and negative to SDG for our planning and new interpretation for some SDGs. For example, Goal number three, what was our interpretation before pandemic or goal number three? I want to go back to this one uh, only for this uh, goal number three. So this is interpretation before pandemic. Okay, tax income generated from tourism can be reinvested in healthcare and services, improving uh, uh, maternal health, reduce child mortality and preventing disease. Visitors fee collected in protected area can as well contribute to health service. So this is our understanding before pandemic for goal number three. But now, what about now? Pandemic happened because of travel, right? Pandemic virus is spread because of travel. So we need new understanding. Tourism and travel now in a connected uh, world can have a very big contribution, positive and negative in health and well-being of uh, people. So we need to uh, re-identify, we need to um, reinterpret our understanding of SDG. 
Also for another goals, goal number 11, 12, 13, for consumption, climate change, we need to come out with the new strategy. If our recovery plan is supposed to be aligned with the SDG, right? We need to focus on domestic and the regional tourism. You can see the contribution in the graph that I show you, the contribution of uh, uh, international tourism. The portion is much lower, smaller, but the contribution is much higher in CO2 emission. So we need to uh, re-strategize our uh, tourism to domestic and regional tourism and focus more on domestic and regional tourism to minimize the impact. Now, if we want to recover and we want to be aligned with SDG. Application of uh, technology is another very important thing. Before pandemic, we didn't think about e-conference, we didn't think about um, webinars, and uh, if we, uh, last year I, I was invited to the conference in uh, India, but I could not make it because, because of visa and some issue. But, uh, so uh, I didn't present and uh, I, actually I didn't uh, deliver my speech because uh, they need my presence to uh, deliver. But today I'm talking about SDG and tourism, for an uh, Indian student in India. So now it's becoming a new normal in conferences, virtual conferences or e-conferences. In visit of destination, especially heritage site, virtual tourism. Google Art and Culture work with over 2,500 museums and galleries worldwide to provide virtual tools during pandemic. This can continue after pandemic. In London, five theaters have teamed up to stream free production at home. And we continue after pandemic. So we actually see a new and amazing application of technology. And this can uh, reduce, can minimize the negative impact. E-business travels, many of the travels are business travels. And now we are working at home and from home for a few months. So this can happen. So we need to uh, actually reinterpret, redefine our understanding from uh, uh, SDG and tourism and re-strategize and actually prepare recovery plan based on this understanding. This is uh, some more uh, point from uh, our editorial for this uh, special issue, technology and SDG uh, post COVID-19. So uh, actually here we suggested the, some area and some contribution of technology that is meaningful now after uh, COVID-19. So uh, can open, open up market opportunity, provide job security and work opportunity, ICT can use to uh, grow business and uh, especially in some areas, some uh, like uh, agro-tourism business, uh, can help to combating uh, climate change. Uh, technology can be used to support local community and its uh, uh, participation, allow them to have a voice that before uh, haven't been allowed to. Also can be a tool for education, tourists and the uh, community and also uh, offer some alternative mechanism to preserve and share local Excuse culture. Excuse me. Okay, this is the last one. Yeah, because uh, we our time period is finishing, so our Zoom, uh, the the license that we have, it will be finishing. So this is last last slide. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, we we actually face new challenges. Later, you can go to. Uh, this is a, a global guideline to restart tourism and report mm -hmm. tourism by UNWTO. And uh, if you go to this uh, guideline, you can see in this guideline, uh, most of part of this guideline focus on hygiene and uh, cleanness and uh, 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 some of this uh, guideline for hotels, for tours, for flights. Right? So this means 
Okay, another another one is the uh, UNWTO initiative to achieve SDG is the tourism plastic initiative and try to minimize using plastic. But what will happen after the pandemic? We uh, actually uh, offer to use more plastic, more masks and uh, cleanness and uh, uh, use uh, sanitizer and many. So, so this will increase something that uh, increase negative impact. So these are new challenges uh, we are facing and we need to look at these uh, new challenges. Okay, that's all from me. And uh, sorry, I uh, actually... No, no, 